Uh, we're going to start probably a minute late so these guys will get out of here. <laughs> CBT team uh, has mostly for dual alumni. It will be competing on July 5th uh, against the team Hardfire, the 14 seed, uh, at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. Uh, we'll have several members from the team joining us throughout the next hour, uh, starting first with head coach Ryan Smith, uh, a former Boilermaker, uh, who's now an assistant at University of Incarnate Word. And uh, Brian, obviously, you were the first head coach for Minnemackey. Um, You know, uh, circumstances are a little different, but uh, talk about your excitement to kind of represent Purdue to coach this team and to potentially win some money. No, it's it's uh, very very fortunate to um, to be able to head co- be a coach of these guys. Uh, it's a great group of guys. Obviously, like you said, it's a, a different circumstance than any other year. But uh, looking forward to getting on the court with them this afternoon. Um, see what we got. Um, got a really good matchup. Um, a good test on uh, on Sunday evening, so we're looking forward to that as well. Can you just walk us through the roster a little bit? Obviously, some people know a lot about the Purdue guys, and you can feel free to talk about them as well, but some of the other guys in the team that they may not be as familiar with. Yeah, um, of course, a guy like Justin Denman, who's a who's a multiple-year uh, professional veteran. I think that was a huge pickup for us. I think more, the more guys you can get with professional um, playing experience, the better, especially in something like this. Um, so he's a bucket. He's a he's a really good guard. Um, a guy like Lamont West is an athlete from from Missouri State. We're excited to have him and add him with some length. Um, Ethan Stair, who's got a great Purdue connection, played for Mercer um, last year under Coach Greg Gary, who was, who was a longtime Purdue assistant. So he's going to ha- have some familiar some familiarity with the uh, the offensive stuff that we want to implement and, and things like that. Uh, Frank Gaines, who's a, who's a great lefty guard uh, from Purdue Fort Wayne, actually played against him as a player. Really good, really good vet, uh, professional vet, like we said. Um, then obviously all the Purdue guys were excited to have them. It would be great to see them get back on the court together again. A reminder for the media in here that if you have a question for Coach or anyone over the next hour to raise your hand and we'll get to you all in an orderly fashion. Uh, not only are you guys playing to win some money for yourselves, but uh, the Tyler Trent Foundation is, is pretty ingrained in, in what you guys are doing. Just talk about the involvement with them and uh, you know, representing him and his family. It's, it's, it's important. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great cause. Obviously what Tyler represented for our university was incredible. Um, just the, just the strength he showed. Um, then obviously the Tyler Trent foundation, the Trent family, it's an incredible family. So I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, obviously honoring Tyler's legacy that he left behind in West Lafayette and, and, and actually, you know, nationwide was, was awesome. So, um, to play for something bigger than yourself is obviously a, a great opportunity. What is the game plan going into your first match with the hard fire? You know, I, I think just get down to the basics uh, of basketball. Everyone's a hooper um, on our roster. Everyone has played a game a long, long time, so it's it's nothing different than what they'd be be used to. I think if we focus on getting stops early, um, you know, and making sure we, we get defensive rebounds, we can get out and go. I think that's gonna gonna um, jumpstart our offense, especially with the guys who uh, you know haven't played a whole lot together. Um, I think if we focus on getting stops and defensive rebounds, and then, then the offense is just gonna flow. Question here from Tom Deanhart. Go ahead, Tom. Tom, if you could just unmute your mic. Any, any advice from Carson Cunningham or, or Coach Painter on uh, as far as offering any coaching pointers? Uh, you know what? Not, not a whole lot. I think I talked to Coach Payne a little bit about, uh, about obviously the Purdue guys and, and what they're about, uh, guys who I hadn't played with. Um, but honestly, the, the, when it comes down to it, especially in this this environment, a guy who like myself who has not played in professional basketball before, I think it's the biggest thing is to not overcoach, um, not try not try to micromanage, let them get out there and do their thing, and they're going to know things um, that happen on the on the court for in game adjustment adjustments better than you know I would because I haven't been out there as a, as a player. So um, I think that was important for me to keep in the back of my head to make sure you give the guys a um, 
you know, obviously a, an opportunity to speak their voice and, and make changes on the fly. Question here from Mike Carmen. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Ryan. What's up, Mike? Hey, uh, why, why was this experience important for you to do? Well, um, first and foremost, it was important just to honor Tyler Trent and his legacy. I think being involved with something like that and, and you know, spreading the word as much as we can for, the, for that foundation to, to battle cancer was important, first and foremost. Um, and then getting back and, uh, and getting involved with guys who have Purdue degrees, um, just to get on the court with them and, and, and learn from them, that, that was huge for me. And then obviously just the coaching experience. If there's anything, whether it's Little League, you know, Pee Wee football, whatever it is, if it's an opportunity to coach, I think I'm going to take advantage of that. I think that's my passion. So, um, it's obviously a great opportunity. I thank Ryan Kay for giving me the, give me the opportunity. Question here from Zach growth. Go ahead, Zach. Thank you. And just wanted to know as a coach, how unique is this challenge of the TBT where the very first game this group plays together is win or go home? <laughs> I think that, I think I didn't think about it that way until you said it that way, but, uh, um, you know, it's, it's unique, but it's also, it's, it's, it's going to be really fun. I think getting out there this afternoon on the practice court with these guys for the first time um, is going to be great. I talked to them this morning about having the unique opportunity to uh, be the first basketball to be played um, on TV since March. I think that's a, a great um, opportunity for them. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but like I said earlier, everyone on our roster is a hooper. Everyone on our roster has played basketball before, whether it's pickup, whether it's professional, whether it's college, whatever it is. Um, they've played before, so they just got to get out there and do what they do and play together as a team and have some fun, and, and we should be all right. Okay, thanks for the question, Zach. Uh, Coach, having this team now, first year, uh, how important is this, you know, going forward to have this team for years to come to represent Purdue basketball and give guys like yourselves and the guys on this team an opportunity to reunite every summer? I think, I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I think it needs to be done every year. Um, I think the, the Purdue fan base, um, I obviously have some bias, of course, um, but the Purdue fan base is the best in the country. Um, and you can see that just by our social media interactions and people reaching out and excited about the, um, you know, excited about Sunday to see these guys get back on the court together. So um, it's, it, it really is, it's a family, Purdue basketball family. It's not, it's not just a basketball program, it's a family. Everyone's kind of intertwined together. Um, and I'm certainly excited to get out there and, and, uh, and work with these guys. Another question here from Tom. Ryan, you think you guys can win it all? <laughs> you know, I, I think that's a great question. I, I certainly have the, uh, the optimism to do so. I think it's all about when you get hot. I think we have a, a, a great guards um, and unselfish dudes on the team, on, on the roster that we made a, a conscious effort to put on our roster. Um, I think that's very important in a, in a tournament like this where you can play together as a team and not, not try to get a guy that's going to go ISO um, the whole game. And obviously you got the big fellows underneath. Um, I think if you can get easy baskets early and get stops early, you can get some momentum, you can get hot. And like any other sport, any other setting, you know, the team that gets hot has, has, a, has a great chance to win it. And, and we'll see what happens on Sunday. Another question here from Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, uh, just kind of uh, the decision to join Carson's staff, kind of what went into that and uh, kind of walk us through – uh, why you wanted to join uh, his staff down there? Well, um, I was obviously at Miami of, of Ohio for the last couple of years as director of basketball operations position. Um, my ultimate goal uh, was to be a Division I assistant. Um, and the opportunity came. He had an opening on his staff. The opportunity came along. Um, I think he, he reached out to Coach Painter about, you know, what he wanted to hire as, in that position as, as a person. I think uh, – very fortunate enough to my name came up first out of coach's mouth and uh, it kind of just transpired from there. I was very lucky to join Jack Owens on his staff um, in that ops position just to learn as much as I could from a great coach, great recruiter, um, great X's and O's guy, great X's and O's staff um, with them. I had a great, great um, experience with them for two years. It was kind of, it was sad to go, but you know, it was the right move to, to step up in the profession. All right, we'll take maybe one or two more questions for Ryan if there are any out there. Uh, otherwise, Ryan, do you have any sort of parting thoughts here or, or message for Purdue fans as they tune in to see you guys on, on Saturday or Sunday night, I should say? 
No, I, I just think it's it's really exciting. I think it'll be it'll be great to see our our Purdue guys out there. I think you see a great mix of guys who who don't have Purdue connections that are that are, have bought in after our meeting this morning. Um, it's a unique situation, obviously, and uh, and I think you can expect you know one thing and, and look to see one thing, and that's going to see our guys play hard and play together. All right, Ryan. Thank you for your time, and we'll bring on Isaac House shortly. Do I need to look at the camera the whole time? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Now we're joined by Isaac Haas, obviously of yeah. Purdue University. Uh, Isaac, just opening statement on your thoughts on joining this team and uh, representing Purdue one more time. I think it was great. Um, it's been a great opportunity to work with Ryan, the GM, and uh, getting to play under Ryan. You know, the the one and only. Uh, being able to play with some of my brothers, you know, from back in the day and. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun with a different collection of guys from other universities as well who've had success overseas and whatnot. It's going to be a, a lot of fun today. You've had the opportunity to play in TBT in the past. What have you told these guys who may have not played in TBT before what the experience is like? Well, you know, I'll let the other professionals that do the talking, you know, in terms of that. But um, I think, honestly, it all just comes down to having the maturity and understanding that basketball is a game of up and downs. Um, the TBT is – no different, right? So being able to maintain your cool and just uh, go out there and play your hardest and play the way that, you know, we know how to play, making an extra pass, making an open shot, um, taking bad shots is just the essentiality of the game. Uh, how do you think that your game has grown or you have personally grown since you, you left Purdue? Uh, well, you know, I've been working on a lot of stuff uh, in terms of just skill development uh, from the outside, um, mobility, athleticism, uh, things that, you know, you never really saw at Purdue um, because I was kind of stuck doing one role. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just needed to, um, you know, expand a lot more in order to develop my professional career. And uh, I feel pretty confident in uh, what I've been working on for the past two years. I'm ready to show it. Uh, in terms of keeping in touch with some of these guys on, on this team, the Purdue guys, uh, what is your you know, conversations with them throughout the year? And, you know, was there a lot of talking about trying to get together and making this team happen? Uh, no, not really. Uh, it actually kind of came up all of a sudden. Ryan hit me and he was like, uh, you know, would you want to play on this Purdue team, you know, with all these other guys that, uh, you know, you've played with in the past? And I was like, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I had other teams reach out to me before that, but as soon as I heard that, it was like, ah, oh, okay, you know, I need to kind of drop all in and kind of go with the Purdue team because, you know, those are my guys. So. Do you feel like this is something that could grow and be a representation of the university every summer, you know, bringing some other guys that may not have been able to participate this summer and really, you know, continue to grow the, the brand? I think potentially it does, yes. I think uh, a lot of guys just have to really commit to the understanding that, you know, it's a it's a time consuming you know event, and uh, once you commit to that, uh, and you're here, I think it's a lot more rewarding than what it seems before you get here. Um, you know, in terms of just the tournament itself and being able to represent, I think if we do well, you know, this tournament, then more people are going to be like, oh, you know, we should come play for this team and represent Purdue. So I think it has the opportunity to be a great thing, and I think Ryan got it started, and uh, we got to owe him a lot of credit. Before I go to this question from Mike, I've noticed over the years that guys who play in TBT for the first time typically want to play in it forever. Do you feel like that's the case? Like, once they get a taste of TBT, they want to. And what is it about TBT that brings guys coming back every year? Well, you know, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, you're playing at the highest level, right? You're playing as pros. You're playing on TV, you know, on ESPN. You, it's nationally televised, especially this one uh, being as special as it is, being the first basketball played in months and months, first sporting event live and uh, I think that you know it's just going to be a great attention grabber and uh, it always has been in terms of the TBT so I think a lot of people just want to win the money obviously of course 
but also, uh, obviously want to show their game and kind of show what they've been doing and kind of remind people they're still around. Question here from Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, Isaac. Hey, Mike. What's up, man? Hey, uh, I think you talked about it a little bit, but you, you, the video kind of cut out. But just how is your game different today as opposed to what you did at Purdue? You mentioned that you were low post guy at Purdue all the time, but how, how have you expanded? How do you feel like you've expanded your game over the last couple of years? Um, well, the past two years, I've really developed, uh, you know, a lot of shooting from the outside, whether it be threes, you know, 15 footers, um, taking people off the dribble face ups, you know, being a little bit more crafty with the ball as well, seeing other people when I'm making those moves to the basket uh, in case they were to collapse on me. Um, it took two years to really develop and feel comfortable with, but now, you know, I feel, you know, ready to show it. You know, if I'm in a situation where that, you know, where that needs to happen, then uh, I'll show it. Question here from Tom. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, Isaac, a two-parter, buddy. Hey, number man. One, <laughs> number one, are you afraid of getting sick with the COVID? Number two, if you win, what will you do with your money? Oh, um, well, first, yeah, I mean, obviously it is uh, nerve-wracking at times, especially when you're in airports and things like that, because, you know, I don't, I don't want to be somebody who's uh, – I feel like I have a pretty strong immune system. Um, so I know that if I were to get sick, maybe, or have it, actually, that I probably wouldn't show any symptoms. And it's not really just about me. I'm more worried about giving it to other people. Um, and then obviously, you know, I don't want to get sick as well. So that is a concern. Um, and I take the necessary precautions with that. You know, wear gloves and the mask and uh, make sure that I'm staying sanitized and all, all, the, all the above, really. Um, and what will I do with my money? Well, honestly, right now, I'll just use it for off-season training uh, and then just really use it to invest in my future um, just in terms of setting up training for maybe for next year or, uh, you know, things like that. Maybe my retirement fund, you know, anything, any and all of the above. <laughs> I could have thought of a multitude of things to spend it on before I was a professional, but, you know, now, now that I'm hit with the adult world, I'm starting to think about the future. Question here from Patrick Graham. Go ahead, Patrick. Hey, one of the things I was looking at um, coming up with this tournament is kind of the individual matchups that will be taking place. And the, obviously, first round, you guys are taking on a team with Isaiah Austin on, on the other side of the ball. Is that an exciting matchup for you? What kind of scouting goes into that? I know you guys don't have a ton of time to prepare, but um, have you watched his game and know what you, know, what you need to do to match up with him? I won't reveal too much of the scout, but yeah, uh, we have reviewed it and um, we have talked about it as well as a team. And uh, I think we're pretty confident moving forward on how to guard him. Um, for me, I think, yeah, it is an exciting matchup. I think he's a great player. I think he has the potential to, you know, pop off just like anybody else can in this tournament. Um, but, you know, you've really got to approach it just like any other game you would in your career. You know, he's, he's another player and he should look at us the same. Awesome. Good luck. Thank you, man. All right, we'll take another question or two for Isaac if uh, anyone has any before we let him go. Uh, otherwise, Isaac, any parting thoughts here? Any uh, anything to say to the Purdue fans who are tuning in to, to see you guys and to you know, cheer you on Saturday night, Sunday night? Excuse me. Yeah, um, I think you know. Thanks for supporting us. Uh, honestly, um, hopefully we can get more of you guys to follow this and make it a, a big thing. You know that everybody's excited about watching. You know, in the middle of the summer uh, when we're technically having a break from Purdue basketball. Um, so I really hope that, you know, this caters a lot of attention in the future and uh, really looking forward to interacting and seeing you guys again once this COVID stuff, you know, gets over with. All right. Thank Isaac for his time and we'll be bringing on John Octi shortly. Thanks, Isaac.
All right, we are now joined by John Octis. A, a quick programming note that Evan Boudreaux will be joining us right after John. And uh, unfortunately, Johnny Hill will no longer be made available for media today. Uh, John, just a quick opening statement. Uh, obviously, you've been in, in TVT for a long time, but being able to represent Purdue, uh, you know, play in front of those fans and be a part of that that culture again. Uh, just talk about how exciting that is for you. Um, super excited just to be um, in the ball with the Purdue name again. Uh, I know it doesn't just go away uh, when you graduate, but it gives you a nice sense of uh, enlightenment, getting back to being able to play and represent um, such a strong university. You spent time at a couple different schools, but what does Purdue mean to you? And what was it about that school that you know made you want to, to be a part of this and to, to represent them in, in a sense? Um, not to take anything away from all the stops that I made uh, before Purdue, um, but Purdue was kind of the finale for my college career, which was a staple in my life, a very important part of my life. Uh, so ending at Purdue, having a successful season, um, and the relationships that I built while I was at Purdue, um, because I was there my fifth year, and I was also there um, rehabbing an injury, uh, my first first injury, um, my professional career. So, and even then, I just got to you know grow in the sense of uh, the family around the, the environment. So, um, it's just a uh, super exciting. Quick question here from Mike Carmen. Go ahead, Mike. So, uh, how many times do you get reminded of your dunk against Indiana? <laughs> um, I mean, over a million times, and uh, I'm looking shooting for the next million times that I get reminded about that that play, <laughs> that particular play. Uh, kind of a, a different question. I know with with COVID going on, and whether college teams will have spectators at events uh, this this season, not only football for basketball, but can you imagine playing in Mackey Arena with no fans or limited fans? and what that experience would be like? Um, it's hard to imagine that um, because I know we know what Maggie looks like <laughs> when it's sold out. Um, uh, the energy in there is um, it's unmatched. So it's very hard for me to imagine that, to be honest. Um, and I'm just going to leave that, that answer right there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Question here from Tom DeHart. Go ahead, Tom. Hey John, uh, how often are you getting? Are they testing you guys down there for COVID? Um, it's been every day since I've been here. So, have they told you how long you be quarantined if, if you tested positive? Um, we I don't know the procedures. Um, that's something that you can look through for the TBT guidelines as far as positive tests. But I know um, as far as negative tests. Um, it uh, took um, a minimum of 24 hours for us to even be able to leave our rooms. Um, so I think they're doing a really, really great job of, of trying to keep us as safe as possible throughout this, uh, this process. Um, but as far as a positive test, I'm not sure of the procedures behind that. Question here from J.D. Arland. Go ahead, J.D. Hey, John. Uh just a quick question about practice. Um, you haven't had the opportunity to play with everybody on this roster, you know, during your time at Purdue. So what's the cohesion been like in just the few practices that you've already done? Um, we haven't had a practice yet. Um, we've been quarantining, um, but we have had an opportunity to sit together and go over some film and some scouting and stuff like that. Um, at the end of the day, we're basketball players. And um, one of the things you have to do as a basketball player is be able to adapt in situations, you know, the team that can adapt in whatever situation that they're thrown into during this tournament is going to have the best chance to be successful. So everybody keeping an open mind and uh, just preparing themselves the best way we can under the circumstances uh, will give us the best chance to win this tournament. Thank you. No problem. Another question here from Mike Carmen. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, you've been through kind of this drill before. What's you know, what are one or two things when you throw a team together like this that that, ha that have to happen for you for to have any kind of success in this tournament? Um, I don't know. At, at Purdue, we talk about play hard. Um, that's one of our sayings. That's one of the things that we do. Um, so that's the first things first. You know, we got to give it our all going out there. As soon as the ball is tipped up, we have to be ready to go. Um, but another thing that I've seen with the teams that have the most success is um, – the ability to uh, be a team. Um, 
the teams that play together um, that are mostly in sync together will and have won the tournament um, over the years. So, um, and I've had success um, playing for another team um, in the past uh, multiple years. And uh, some of the things that brought us that success was that uh, that idea of kind of just throwing the ego out the window and then focusing on the team group, the team dynamic. Thank you. <clears throat> Looks like we have another question from Tom here. Tom, go ahead. All right. Yeah. What do you think specifically your, your role is going to be on the squad? Um, just to bring kind of what John Oxius usually brings to a team, uh, adaptability. Whatever the team needs me to do in order to you know aid in our success, that's kind of how I'm approaching this uh, this tournament. Um, like I said, we haven't um, practiced yet. Um, but we know what type of talent we have on the team. And guys know what, you know, where their game lies and what they're good at. Um, for me personally, just bringing a, a form of leadership to the team um, in any way that I can aid us in winning. So just being adaptable in that, form, in that, in that, in that aspect. John, how do you think your game has grown since you left Purdue? Oh man, my game has grown a lot since I left Purdue. This is year five I'm going into um, as a professional. Um, and to be honest, it's just the understanding of the game. Um, if you're a student of the game, you understand that every year that goes by, you learn something else that you didn't realize that you didn't know about the year before. Um, so just uh, every year, and again, I, I go back to adaptability again because I've been in multiple situations as a pro and I've had different responsibilities on each team as a pro. So um, that has grown a lot. And in my game, my game has just grown in a lot of different areas. I see Tom's hand is still raised. Make sure he does. Tom, do you have another question you wanted to ask? Uh, no, I do not. Sorry about that. No worries. All right, I have, uh, no more questions. We'll let John go in a second. Uh, any parting thoughts for, for Purdue fans before you guys play on Sunday? Uh, just be ready for Sunday. We're going to give it our all, and we're super excited. All right, thank you, John. I'll right, bring on Evan Boudreau momentarily. All right, we're now joined by recent Purdue grad, Evan Boudreau. Uh, Evan, just some quick opening thoughts on going straight from playing at Purdue to now representing the Purdue alumni team as you begin your pro career. Yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been a crazy couple months. Uh, obviously, like, everything ended so quickly, um, you know, with COVID and everything. Um, so, yeah, being able to put on, you know, Purdue gear, play with Purdue guys um, is definitely awesome. Uh, it's definitely something I'm really looking forward to. You spent two years at the school after a couple years at Dartmouth. Uh, what was it about Purdue um, that sort of captivated you and made you want to continue to represent the university after after leaving there? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things is the Purdue network is just so tight. I mean, the, the alumni are, are so close. Um, you know, there's such a, a school spirit and school, school pride that uh, I think people really identify with. Um, you know, obviously, I had some really great memories from Purdue, and, um, you know, my time there was, was awesome. So being able to do this again was something I jumped on. Question here from J.D. Arland. Go ahead, J.D. Hey, Evan. I just wanted to talk about since your time at Purdue, how have you been practicing uh, during quarantine, even though, you know, facilities have been limited? 
Yeah, I mean, it's been tough. I mean, things, you know, obviously as the viruses numbers have come out, things have gotten shut down and um, finding gyms has been tough. I've been lucky um, where uh, I've had a uh, half court actually at my house uh, in my basement, so that's been nice. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to use um, a gym in my local town that uh, was private. So um, being able to stay in shape and, and do that kind of thing was, was huge for me um, just because I'm still not sure on what I'm doing, um, you know, in the future for my career. So, yeah, that was Thank big. You. Thank you. Question here from Mike Carmen. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, Evan. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, you know, when you when you put a team together like this uh, that ha that hasn't played together, what are what are some some keys that have to happen for for this group to have some success in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think one of the great things is that uh, a lot of the Purdue guys, you know, already know each other, and we already know, you know, a lot of the, offensive stuff and, and we all play you know team basketball and I think uh, in an event like this um, you know you got to really be connected and uh, on both sides of the floor and I think for us you know we're going to play really hard and, and we're going to you know get after teams and um, that's something that's just kind of non-negotiable with Purdue guys so um, you know, I think the chemistry is not going to be a problem for us I think um, I think we're all really excited. Also wanted to ask you with so much uncertainty about whether spectators can be at sporting events this season and a lot of focus on football, but can you imagine playing in Mac Arena with no fans or limited fans and what that experience would be like? Uh, uh, no, I mean, you know, we've done scrimmages where it's silent, but playing a real game um, with no fans is, is going to be going to be real weird if that's, that turns out to be the case. Um, I definitely think it takes a little bit of the, the home field or home court advantage away just because, um, our fans are just so crazy and, and get so loud that uh, when you don't have them there, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot different. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little glad I don't have to kind of go through that um, just because it's, it's just going to be so weird. Thanks, Evan. Evan, the opportunity to, to use TBT. There's a lot of guys who are graduating college this year and immediately playing TBT. You know, no summer league, the draft being pushed back. Uh, a lot of international teams and I'm sure NBA teams are going to be watching this uh, on ESPN. How do you think, you know, playing in TBT can, can help launch your, your pro career and, and maybe catch some eyes of scouts? Yeah, I mean, you look at, you know, you look at the teams here. Uh, you look at the guys we're going to be playing against. I mean, you've got, you know, former NBA picks. You've got guys who played in Europe for a long time. Um, so the talent level is really high. And I think, you know, when you're playing um, basketball and you want to showcase your talents, you know, you want to play against the best. And, uh, you know, this tournament offers that. So for me uh, and for all the guys who are just coming out, I think it's a great opportunity to, to get you know, film out there and, and get tape out and um, you know, kind of launch that career. I'll take a, a final question for, for Evan, if anyone has any. Uh, otherwise, one more from J.D. Arlen. Go ahead, J.D. Hey, Evan, what uh, role do you think you're going to be playing with this team, and how is that going to be different than the role you played with the Boilers during your time? Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm not really sure. I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things where we got to get into practice and, and start playing. But um, for me, I mean, you know, uh, I'm a guy who's, who's really known just for um, – being able to make shots and then and then get a lot of rebounds and loose balls and do a lot of the dirty things and um, no, I don't think that's something I anticipate changing. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be fun. I think you know we have so many talented guys on this team. It'll be fun to to see how the pieces fit. And how's the golf game? Oh, it's getting better. It was, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I gotta I gotta get back after this week. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to here. But uh, you know, it's getting better. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Evan, any parting thoughts for Purdue fans before I let you go here? No, I think I'm, uh, I'm good. All right. Thank you, Evan, for your time. We'll bring on Jaquil Taylor momentarily.
All right, we're now joined by Jaquiel Taylor, uh, formerly of Purdue and Hofstra, but obviously representing the, the men of Mackey and TBT. Just uh, talking about, you know, being back with the Purdue guys, representing the university, and, uh, you know, playing in TBT for the first time. Uh, so to answer your first question, being, at, being on back with Purdue, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, I'm glad I get to be with my guys again and just play basketball for TBT. It's a tremendous honor. Uh, I've been wanting to play in TBT for a while now, and I'm just glad to be playing in it. Question here from J.D. Arlen. Go ahead, J.D. Hey, Jaquiel, uh, you tweeted a while back that you were excited to play with Johnny Hill. Um, why is that? Well, because I've played with Johnny Hill before, and he's a fun guy to be around, and he's just – that's my guy. Thanks. What was it about Purdue that you loved so much that you want to you know, continue to have the opportunity to represent them in a setting like this? Well, the main thing I love about Purdue so much was the fact that just being good guys and just another chance to really play in the black and gold. Uh, is there – obviously, Tyler Trent, his family, the foundation is involved uh, with this TBT team. To be able to, you know, make a deep run or potentially win it, you know, some winnings going to his family and his charity, uh, how special would that be for you guys? I think it's extremely special because we all – well, for Purdue people, we all know how important and how special Tyler was to the Purdue community. So I think it would be a great thing to win this for him and with the donations to his family and the Tyler Trent. What is it going to be like having the, the support of the Purdue fans? I imagine you've already seen it on, on social media, how excited they are to, to see you guys compete in this thing. Can I say that one time? How excited, you know, have you seen the support from Purdue fans on, on social media and how excited they are to, to see you guys play in this thing? Oh, yes, that's their Purdue Fan base is like none other. That's one thing for certain is when you're from, when you graduate Purdue, you've been to Purdue, they'll support you 100%. Uh, if we have any more questions for Jaquiel, well, here we go. One from JD. Go ahead, JD. Hey, Jaquiel. So you've obviously, there's a big, you've got a couple of big guys on the roster, uh, you and Isaac. How do you see you and Isaac kind of sharing time and, and what role are you going to be playing that's different than his? Uh, it's hard to say. Me and Isaac have two different styles, of, two different styles. But I mean, I don't really know per se what my role would be. And I mean, it's just a matter of getting on the court and just seeing what happens. All right, thanks. All right, any uh, parting thoughts here for Purdue fans before they tune in on Sunday night? I'm sorry. Any any thoughts for, for Purdue fans? Anything that you guys plan to show them when you guys step on the court Sunday night? Mm-hmm. Just be ready to watch. All right. And with that, we will conclude today's Metamacky Media Day. Uh, thank you to everyone who, who tuned in, and we'll be distributing an MP4 file shortly. Thanks.